Hello students, this is Mr. Courtney here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about naming binary compounds or nomenclature. So name, nomenclature is basically a naming system. When we talk about binary compounds, we're talking about compounds that contain two different elements. Okay, so compounds that contain two different elements, we call them binary compounds. The objectives for today will be to review ions, to name binary compounds, binary ionic compounds, sorry, and to name binary covalent compounds. So we'll also look at what is an ionic compound and what is a covalent compound. So let's start off with cations. Remember, cations are formed when metals lose electrons. And because they lose electrons, they now have more protons than electrons. That means they have more positive charge than negative charge. So they, hence, they have a positive charge. Now, the metals in group 1A, 2A, and 3A, the cations that they form has a charge that is the same as their group number. So if you look at sodium and you look at a periodic table, sodium is in group 1. It has a charge of plus 1 when it forms an ion. Calcium in group 2 lose, will lose 2 electrons. It has a charge of plus 2. It's in group 2. Aluminum is in group 3. Loses 3 electrons. Has a charge of plus 3. Now, in terms of identifying or naming these ions, we name the cation just as the element. But just to differentiate, we put ion at the end. So it carries the same name, but in terms of differentiation, we put ion at the end. So we say sodium ion, calcium ion, and aluminum ion. Just to differentiate the ion from the element itself. So anions are formed when nonmetals gain electrons. Now if they gain electrons, that means they gain in negative charge. That means they will have more negative charge than positive charge. Hence, anions are negatively charged. How do you determine the value of the charge or the size of that charge? What we do is you take the group number of the element and subtract 8 from it. So for example, chlorine is in group 7. If you subtract 8 from 7, from 7 you get negative 1 which is a charge of the ion of chlorine take oxygen which is in group 6 subtract 8 from 6 you left with a charge of negative 2 which is the charge of the ox oxygen ion so if you subtract 8 from the group number for the not that nonmetal you'll get its charge in terms of naming these ions what we look at you take the root of the element name or the stem of the element name. So for example, we have chlorine. The root will be C-H-L-O-R. And then you add the suffix I-D-E. So we drop the I-N-E and add the suffix I-D-E. Hence, we end with chloride. What we're looking at here is how the location of an element on the periodic table can be used to determine its charge. So for example, we see all the elements in group 1 they have a plus one charge. All the elements in group two have a plus two charge. All the elements in group eight have a charge of zero. Some of the elements in group seven have a negative one. Some of the elements in group two, group six, sorry, have a negative two, and some of them in group five have a negative three. In group three, plus three, and then some of these metals in the middle here, which you call transition metals, they have a set charge. I want you to look at, it will be important for you to know that these charges, these known charges, they'll be coming, they will be very important in terms of naming compounds and writing the formula of compounds later on. Okay, so let's discuss ionic compounds. What is an ionic compound? It is composed of positive and negatively charged ions in a three-dimensional arrangement. And the three-dimensional three-dimensional arrangement is held together by the electrostatic attraction between the positive and negative charges. Remember, like charges will repel and unlike charges will attract. Because the cations are positively charged and the anions are negatively charged, there is an attraction between them that holds this, helps to hold this compound together. And it's usually between a metal and a non-metal. So when we look at ionic compounds, we're going to find a metal and a non-metal in it. 
and they're going to be electrically neutral. That means our positive charges are equal to our negative charges. So they're equal but opposite. So if you have, if your total negative charge is negative 3, then your total positive ch charge should be positive 3. Again, equal but opposite in terms of the sign. And they're going to be mostly solids at room temperature. So here this picture sums up what we just talked about. You see you have the negatively charged particles and positively charged particles. And the positively charged particles, which are metals, so remember metals form cations, are attracted to the anions, which are the non-metals on the outside. Because unlike charges, attract positive charges are attracted by negative charges. Let's look at naming binary ionic compounds. Remember, binary ionic compounds are composed of a cation and an anion. And the cation is going to be named first, and the anion is going to be named second. Type 1 compounds, where the metal forms only one type of cation. So the metal only forms one type of cation. In the type 2 compounds, the metal forms two or more cations. So these cations will have different charges. Or you can say the metal forms ions with two or more different charges. These are our type 2 compounds. So here we see what we're talking about. The metals that will form these, comp these type 2 ions are our transition metals because they form cations with various charges. Meaning that, meaning that the charges can be different. So they can form ions with multiple charges. And we will look at some examples in a bit. So here are some examples of some common type 2 cations. So if we notice, we have the same elements, iron and iron. We have copper and copper, cobalt and cobalt. And if you look at the systematic name, there is a link between the systematic name and the ion itself. If you look at the charge on iron, the charge is plus 3. Now look at the Roman numeral that follows the systematic name, is 3. In plus 2, the Roman numeral is 2. So the Roman numeral indicates the charge on the ion itself. So if you look at copper 1, then the charge on copper is plus 1. Tin 2, the charge on tin is plus 2. Now, in the older name, the older naming system before they used the Roman numerals, the plus three charge for copper, sorry, the plus two charge for copper ends in ik, cupric. The plus one charge ends in us, cobalt. The plus three charge ends in ik, and the plus two charge ends in us. So here you can see there is a pattern. The higher charge, the ion with the higher charge ends with ik, and the ion with the lower charge ends with us. Let's look at tin as the final example here. Tin has two ions. Tin 2 and tin 4. Alright, sorry. Tin 2 here and tin 4 here. Tin 2, which is a lower charge, is called stannous. Tin 4, which is a higher charge, is called stannic. So they have the same root, but the suffix is different. So let's look at naming these binary, type 1 binary ionic compounds. You're going to write the name of the metal ion. Remember the name of the metal ion is going to be the same as the element. Write the name of the non-metal ion. Use the root name of the element plus the suffix "-ide". So our metal in this case is Ca, so that is calcium. And our non-metal is bromine. So we name calcium, but we use B-R-O-M as a root for bromine. And then we add the suffix I-D-E. So we call that calcium bromide or calcium bromide. So let's look at naming these compounds. And we go through the same steps. Name the metal, same name as the element. Name the anion, 
this time you're going to take the root of the element name and add the suffix IDE. So in the first example, our metal is sodium and our non-metal is fluorine. So that becomes sodium fluoride. The second example, we have magnesium and oxygen. So we name magnesium and we take the OX from oxygen as the root and we add the suffix IDE. So we get magnesium oxide. The third example, strontium and chlorine. The metal has the same, the metal ion has the same name, so that the strontium and chlorine as the ion is called chloride, so that is strontium chloride. And example four, by now you should know, is lithium sulfide. Name and type two binary ionic compounds. So the first thing we need to do is determine the charge of the metal ion. Because remember, these are the ions that can have multiple charges. So we need to, need to determine the charge of the metal ion. How do we know if it's a type 2 ionic compound, type 2 or a type 2 binary compound? What we need to do is look at where this element is found on the periodic table. So you know this is a transition, ion is a transition metal, so it's going to have different charges. To find the charge of the ion, we need to know two things, or we need to remember a couple things. First of all, we need to remember that the overall charge on an ionic compound is zero. And what that means again is that our total positive charge is equal to our total negative charge. We already know the charge of chloride ion because that is one of those things you should know. Chloride is negative one. So if I take the charge on the ion, on ion, and I add it to the charge of chloride, but since I have three of the chloride ions, I multiply by three. These should add to zero because my positive charge must be equal to my negative charge. Remember, they must be equal and opposite. So that gives me ion as positive three. Now I'm going to write the name of the cation followed by the Roman numeral that matches its charge. So since it's three, the Roman numeral is three, ion three. Then I'm going to name the anion name the non-metal ion as normal. Since it's chlorine, it becomes chloride. So that's ion three chloride. Or if I wanna use the old naming system, go back and look for what ion three is, and you'll see that it is called ferric. So we can name this compound ferric chloride also. Let's look at these two examples. So we have lead and chlorine. Lead is also a transition metal. So we need to determine what charge lead has in this compound. We know chlorine has a charge of negative one. We multiply by two. That gives us a total charge of total negative charge of two. So that means lead must have a charge of positive two. And once we know that, we put the Roman numeral two after the name lead and then name the anion chloride. So lead to chloride with chromium and, and sulfur. Sulfur has a negative two charge. And since we have three of them, we need to multiply it by three. But we also have two of our chromium ions here. So two times the charge on chromium plus three times negative two is equal to zero. And when we solve for that, we'll get two times the chromium is equal to a total charge of positive six. So that means one chromium ion must have a charge of positive three. And once we get that charge now, we put the Roman numeral after the chromium, after chromium, and we, we name the non-metal ion. So that gives us chromium three sulfide. And if we use the old naming system for the lead to chloride, you'd have gotten to be plumbus chloride. So quickly review type one and type two binary compounds. Does the metal form more than one cation? If it's no, you use the element name for the cation. It's a type one. If it does form more than one cation, determine the charge of the, uh, the cation and use your Roman numerals after the element name for the cation. Bi type three binary compounds. They contain two different nonmetals. And when we have two different nonmetals combined, we form what we form covalent compounds. 
So when you look at the formula for covalent compound, you will see non-metals only. So how do we name these type 3 binary compounds or these covalent compounds? First, we write the full name of the first non-metal. In this case, it is nitrogen. Write the second, write the name of the second non-metal as an anion. Remember, root plus IDE, so we get oxide. What we're going to do now is that we're going to specify how many of each atom is present for each element. So for nitrogen, we have two. Oxygen, we have four. So we're going to use what we call prefixes. We use the prefix di for two. So that's dinitrogen. And we use the prefix tetra for four. So that's dinitrogen tetraoxide. A tetroxide, sorry. So that's dinitrogen tetroxide. And that's it. It is that simple. Okay, so recap that. You write the full name of the element of the first nonmetal. Then write the second name of the nonmetal as an anion. So we use the root plus ide. And then we use prefixes to specify how much of each atom is present. So what are prefixes? We use prefixes to show the ratio of elements in covalent compounds. Now, there are rules for using prefixes, and there are two rules that you would need to remember. Never use the prefix mono with the first element. So if you have one of the first elements, you will not use the prefix mono. When you're going to add a prefix in front of oxide, remove the A or the O before adding that prefix in front of oxide. So let's look at that example. CO. We have one carbon. Notice I did not say, we did not write monocarbon. We do not use the prefix mono with the first element. So that's just carbon. We also have one oxygen. So that's mono prefix. Mono goes in front of oxide. But notice here, we did not have two O's coming together because we dropped the O after mono before putting it in front of oxide or before adding it to oxide. So we, get, we got carbon monoxide. Okay, so let's look at these examples. We have the elements phosphorus and bromine. We have one phosphorus. We have three bromines present. So we're gonna say phosphorus, not monophosphorus, but just phosphorus. Try, and we know bromine is bromide, so it's phosphorus tri bromide the second one we have two nitrogens and four chlorines nitrogen remains the same name chlorine becomes chloride so that's dinitrogen tetra chloride cl2o7 we have chlorine and oxygen we have two chlorine ions present not ions but two chlorine atoms present and seven oxygen atoms present so it's dichlorine heptoxide notice we did not say heptoxide we dropped the a at the end before adding it to oxide and then we have dinitrogen monosulfide notice we did not need to drop the o because it is not in front of oxide Okay, so let's sum summarize the name in binary compounds. So is it a binary compound? Yes. Is there a metal present? If a metal is not present, then we use prefixes. They are going to be type 3. If there is a metal present, then you have to ask this next question. Does the metal form more than one cation? If the answer is no, then it's a type 1. You use the element name for the cation. If it does form more than one cation, it's a type 2. That means we use the Roman numerals after the element name of the cation. All right, so that takes us to the end of this video for a name in binary compounds. I hope this was helpful to you and beneficial. Until the next time, I'm out. Blessings.